I'm Arnold Gay in Singapore, which is hosting the fourth edition of International Energy Week. Joining me is Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan. He's the Minister for the Environment and Water Resources here in Singapore. Dr. Balakrishnan, this is a timely conference given the upcoming climate treaty talks in Durban next month. Realistically, though, what can we expect? Well, I've attended several rounds of uh, formal and informal negotiations. And I think it's important to get our expectations right. Although from a purely you know, Singapore perspective, a small island state next to the sea, and therefore vulnerable to climate change, what we really want is a multilateral, rules-based, legally binding agreement that applies globally. Unfortunately, this is not going to be achieved in December this year. Uh, what, however, we will see, I hope, is a series of incremental steps. So there'll be progress, there'll be some momentum, but not the final solution. So this is less about a breakthrough and more about avoiding a breakdown? I think if we can see progress on renewal of the second commitment period, the Kyoto Protocol, institutionalization of the Green Climate Fund, improvements in pledges made, as well as in the system for verifying those pledges, it will allow us to at least conclude that we are making some progress. This, I believe, will be a holding pattern until about 2015 when the IPCC will issue an assessment report. And that will give us a clearer idea based on the latest science and technological evidence on the gap between what we're doing or what we've pledged to do and what the world needs if we are to avoid catastrophic climate change. At that point, say about 2014, 2015, knowing that gap, I hope that will lead to greater political commitment to, have, uh, to raise our ambitions in terms of cutting greenhouse gases. And would Singapore be supportive of a global trading emission system? We believe that this would be a positive step, but it needs to take place in the context of a global, legally binding agreement. It's very difficult. In fact, it may even be dangerous if there are unilateral measures taken to push this. And you end up with trade or pseudo-trade wars occurring in the name of global warming. That will be counterproductive. So unfortunately, this is one of those issues where it requires global cooperation um, in order to avoid the ultimate tragedy of the commons. In the context of Singapore then, can you tell us a little bit more about the efforts that have been made to attain sustainability? This is not something new for us. You know, since at least last five decades of modern development in Singapore, we've always been acutely aware. We can't afford to waste resources. We've got to make sure we take care of our environment. We don't endanger human life. And in fact, increasingly so, I think particularly in the last decade or so, it's become evident that the quality of air, the livability of your environment, is also a competitive economic advantage. It's the reason why talented people or companies will want to establish a base here. So I, I'm making these points so you understand that for us, this is not just a nice to have or a marketing uh, ploy. This is really integral to our entire approach to development in Singapore. But in a way, Singapore is also caught in a bind, like many other countries. I yes. mean, on the one hand, you want to have growth, yes. uh, but some of this, this growth will come with increased pollution, with increased environmental degradation. How do, you, how do you get this balance? Well, I think that's where it illustrates a combination of policy, a sensible, rational policy framework on one hand, and an openness and willingness to use latest technology in order to achieve better outcomes, more efficient outcomes, and safer outcomes. It can be done. And, of course, the, you know, the, the icing on the cake is that we believe clean technologies, clean environment technologies, and businesses are also the way to, to go forward for the future. So you can think what is a strategic disadvantage convert it into a strategic opportunity. What we've done with water, for instance, is a prime example of that.